<laughs> Long day yesterday. Well, I didn't get what I wanted to get done, so I gotta come back. The, uh, my, mower, my mower wouldn't work when I first got here, so I had to go buy some for you. When I was out there and the grass was hiding the rock, it broke. out of the guard on my weed. I'm like, I didn't see it. It was up underneath all this grass. And I'm like, as soon as that blade hit it, it's like, Toof. it was just vibrated everything loose and took the screws out of it. Yeah, it was, I said, yeah, so I'll be buying, go buy me two screws and I can bring them back again. <laughs> thinking about a minute ago as we come together and we were talking about this right before service when we come together you we come together with the expectancy that god has exactly what we need right i mean we that should be our expectancy our our, our focus our mindset that god knows what we've been going through he knows the challenges that we face and he's present here ready to help us i was thinking about um grew up on a, a real busy road and in order to ride my bicycle <laughs> Literally, there was about a 100-yard stretch where if I got on the main highway and didn't get run over by a tractor trailer and could make it about 100 yards, I could veer, veer left and I could get off the main road. But it was a crazy road I had to get on, but I was off the main road. So when I would try to do that, there was always two locations that there would be dogs that were going to chase me. Now, listen, I, I'm, I guess I'm an animal lover as much as you can be if you're not an animal lover. I live with a cat. But uh, I don't like to be chased by animals of any sort. I, I especially don't like to be chased by dogs. And there was two locations on this loop that I'd made where there were going to be two dogs that came after me. And I remember, you know, and it's bad. I, I'm thinking if there had been video camera playing, it would be something to look back on it. Because I got to where when I realized where these dogs were going to be on the journey, I would ease up there as close as I could get, hoping not to make any noise. 
And then, you know, when I knew they had spotted me, and I know you're not supposed to, like, run from them because that's the worst thing. Then they want to chase you. But anyway, I did. And I would pedal as hard as I could possibly pedal to try to fly by them. And if I could get far enough past them before they decided, hey, let's chase the boy in the blue bike, then maybe I was going to get past them. And, I, and, and the, the connection I'm making this morning is it, it, so many times we come into church kind of with that same mentality. I'm just going to kind of ease along and hope nothing, you know, like just nothing. The, the enemy doesn't mess with me. We're just going to kind of ease along. And I'm thinking about how different that is than what that song was declaring a minute ago. Because it was saying, if he's for us, then who can be against us? If he's on our side, then should we really fear anything that might be coming our way? It doesn't mean that we're not going to be hit. It doesn't mean that we're not going to be chased. It doesn't mean that we're not going to be impacted. But it does mean his presence with us will make all the difference. And so I say that to you this morning. Approach it that way. Let's approach him this morning in that mindset, saying, God, you know exactly what I need, and I'm not going to cower, I'm not going to sneak up and try to sneak past, but Lord, I'm going to pursue you, and I'm going to just give you everything I've got so that you can fill me up and give me what you know I need. Amen? Amen. 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 That was totally free. That was had nothing to do with the sermon. That's just, there it is. There are several things that are not listed in your bulletin, and I need to run through some of these, and if you'll give me just a second, I'll try to kind of make it as quick as I can, but it's, you know, announcements, I guess, can be kind of fun, because it's the time I get to talk to you about whatever we want to talk about. First thing we want to talk about is work day. Yesterday, I thank you so much. Many who came through the week and were working and doing different things, but thank you for the eight folks who, who were able to be here yesterday. We were able to get a lot of our top projects done. And I really, really do appreciate it. And here's what I have discovered about my friend Ronnie. He is an archaeologist. You might say, among many things. He's a hard worker. And he uncovered some curves that I'm pretty sure have been buried with mud and dirt for the last 25 years. He uncovered them by edging and scraping and cleaning and blowing. And man, I am seeing curves around here that I hadn't seen in forever. So everybody that was here yesterday, the work that took place inside the building and outside the building, thank you so much for being a part of that. Um, the women's class begins Wednesday night. Super excited about a new topic. Looking for Lovely is the name of the new course. And you can see it's by Annie Downs. Uh, Becky's going to do a great job with it. So I hope all of our ladies that have been coming will make plans to continue to be a part of it. And I hope you'll invite other folks. It's been exciting to watch that women's class just really grow on Wednesday night. And so you don't want to miss it. You definitely want to be a part of it. We'll offer church membership at the end of uh, service today. Remember that Youth Fest is, uh, Winter Fest, I'm sorry, is coming March 9th through 11th. Immediately following service, Ashton needs to get paperwork to those that are going to Winter Fest. So if you'll meet him just kind of right up here, right after service, he'll give you that paperwork. Also, March the 24th is the Glow Run. Many of you have committed to be a part of that with us. We're going to have a great, great, great time. And one of the things I wanted to mention is if you're donating your $25 or $40, or $50, $100 toward that, if you will make sure on the tithing envelope and mention that it's for Glow Run. Um, one of the things we're excited about a couple, first of all, is the element of fellowship that this is going to offer. Exercise is always good. And then the other thing is it gives us as a church the opportunity to uh, be in the community and really just to minister love on folks and then let them know who we are. So thank you for all of you who've committed to either run, be a part of it, or donate money toward it. And just make sure you mark that on your tithing envelope. Uh, also, the Easter egg hunt, March 31st, we're still ironing out some of the details on that. So we'll give you all the details we, we, uh, you need as we get closer. Also, uh, anyone who's interested in either being a part of the music ministry, whether that's instruments, singing, uh, part of a sound booth, uh, any, anything having to do with technology, music, that kind of thing, if you'll see Ashton, he would love to talk with you about it and uh, would love to see some different folks begin to serve and minister in that way. Uh, glow run money. I mean, I've literally written on every square inch of this, and I've written in areas I can't see real well. So, uh, Remember that next Sunday morning is uh, times are changing. Times that are changing. Spring is forward. So daylight savings time. Don't forget it so that you'll definitely show up at the right time. If you get here late, you'll miss it. If you get here early, just spend some time in prayer. And we'll be with you shortly. Baptism next Sunday. For anyone who's interested in being baptized, uh, we're super excited about that. We're excited about baptizing Ivy next Sunday morning. And there may be others of you who've been thinking about it, praying about it, but would like to. If you'll contact me, talk to me. Uh, the final thing I think on my list is I want to just encourage you to invite someone to come to church with you. 
we thought of all kinds of ways to invite and get the word out there. I mean, I thought about one of these call-outs where at like 5.30 on Sunday morning, you know, you get this peppy message from me, you know, Hello, good morning, it's 5.30. You should be up and on your way to church. But we kind of decided against that because I'm, quite frankly, I'm thinking some folks would not appreciate that. <laughs> The most effective, powerful way that we have of letting folks know what's going on here is for you to invite, for you to love on them, and for you to load them up and bring them. I was thinking about sometimes, have you ever had a really good eating spot that you really, really love to go? I'm thinking of one right now. I mean, I can smell a fried chicken as I'm standing here. I can just smell it. And anybody and everybody I talk to, I tell them about the village in Chatsworth, on the back street in Chatsworth. If you want some good old country cooking, you won't just walk in there and feel love in the air. Go to Chatsworth on the back street to the village and tell them I sent you because they probably know me. I've eaten a lot of food there. But the point is, when there's something that we're really excited about, we tell people about it. And I tell everybody about the village. If you want good chicken, go to the village. So... Be sure that you're loving on folks, calling folks, telling folks, inviting folks. That goes for our youth. Remember that our youth have transitioned back to Wednesday night. And we had, I think it was seven this past Wednesday night. And I'm just excited not only to see the, the women's class grow, but also our youth on Wednesday night to grow. And that only happens as we're diligent and vigilant to make sure that we're inviting and showing up. And, you know, so anyway, I want to encourage you in that way. Rah, rah, rah. Go, go, go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they let the coach do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the way I'm looking at it, with a start like that, there's nowhere for us to go but up. You know it? <laughs> We've had cheering and speeches and all that. Listen, I, I want to say to you that there's a lot of, of folks I know who've been going through it. And there are a lot of our folks that are going through it now. Rebecca Ferguson continues to need prayers. As most of you know, she's back in the hospital and just really, really, really... Uh, she's been going through it. I mean, and she really needs to be held up. I appreciate so much. Many of you who gave her calls this week and some of you stop by the hospital. I tell her every time I see her that we love you. We're praying for you. Folks are asking me about you. But that doesn't replace just you guys picking up the phone or swinging by there. So thank you so much for that. Um, I know that several requests were mentioned this morning uh, in terms of a, a co-worker of Terry's. And just, there are a lot of things that are going on. So if you have a prayer request this morning, just an unspoken request, that you want to give in this morning. I know we're continuing to remember Josh, and, and there's just so many. If you have, yeah, just all over the place, you can see hands. He knows about it, doesn't he? God knows. And I, I want us this morning, as we as we go to him in prayer, not just simply to go to him with the thought of, hey, this is just what we do to open the service, but I want us to go to him this morning with the, the, the intention that, Lord, this is the moment that we declare our dependence on you. You're our source. You're our help. You're our strength. And Lord, we're calling upon you. We're doing what we can do. We're, we're doing everything we know to do. But Father, more than that, we're trusting in you that you have everything under control. Will you help me do that this morning? Amen. Amen. I say it every week, and I don't mean it in a mean way. I can't do that for you. You can only, only you can do that for yourself. I mean, I can do it for me. I can encourage you to do it, but I can't make you do it. I can't, I can't do it for you. If I could, Ashton and I in a heartbeat, we do it for you, but we can't do it for you. So I just encourage you this morning. Let's call on him, okay? Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's do it. Father, I thank you this morning. Before I ever thought about you this morning, Lord, I was already on your mind. You were already thinking about this moment that you would have us corporately together when you could and would show up and manifest your power and presence in this place. So, Father, this morning, we're simply asking that what you have designed and determined to do, God, that we would cooperate with you and let it happen. There were a lot of hands that went up in this place this morning of folks saying, I need encouragement, I need strength, I need healing in my body, I need a financial miracle. God, there were needs in every part of this building, and I'm just asking you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to meet every one of those needs, to come alongside those that are downtrodden and discouraged, whose hearts feel broken, whose shoulders are weighted down. I'm asking you, Lord, to bring help and strength. Lord, I pray for Rebecca Ferguson this morning. Father, I pray that you right now would just touch her and raise her up and bring healing to her body. And I pray the fluid around her heart and all the other issues that are going on in her body, that, Lord, you would just heal her and give strength, strength to Randy. Hold up, God, that family. For every need and situation, Lord, we just put these things into your hands. And we're thankful this morning 
Lord, we're thankful not only for the things that you've done in the past, but Lord, we're thankful for those things that we sense you doing even in this moment. And Lord, because we're thankful, as an act of gratitude and appreciation, God, we give honor and praise and glory to you. And Lord, the gifts that we give and the things that we offer to you, Lord, we know that it's just being faithful stewards because it's yours anyway. Lord, we confess that none of it's ours. So Lord, help us to be faithful in all we do. And Lord, we love you this morning and praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. As the ushers come this morning, let's just worship the Lord in our giving this morning. And guys, we just prayed over it, so if you'll go ahead and receive the offering this morning.
ourselves at moments. I was thinking about just physically about the example of gas and the gas tank. All of us have been at those moments where we didn't have nearly enough in our wallet. You pull up to the gas station and you know that you, you need to be able to go the next distance that you've got to go. And you're digging through the ashtray and you're pulling out the lint out of your pockets and any quarters, nickels, and dimes that are stuck under the seat. You're doing anything you can to put enough gosh, to put enough fuel in the tank so you can make it where you're trying to go. Listen, I, I don't mean to be harsh and I don't mean to be, I, I don't mean this to sound as mean as it's going to sound, but we're way too passive this morning for what we've got going on. We're way too passive. We're way too just, if it does, then good, if it doesn't. Listen, I'm telling you, there are some folks in this building this morning that they've been digging under the seats and they've been looking for nickels and quarters and dimes because they need to be filled. Well, the good thing about God is it doesn't take nickels and dimes and quarters, does it? All it takes is giving Him everything and allowing Him to fill you up. But you understand what I'm saying. There's some folks that need Him to come through. They need Him to move this morning. And I'm telling you, it's up to all of us corporately to bind together. You might say, I don't need anything. I'm in great shape. But listen, this room is full of folks that do. And I tell you, my posture this morning is I'm going to stand beside those who do. And I'm going to say, Lord, right here, right here, right now. And I'm telling you, I pray that God will just stir something up in us this morning. And not just this morning, but it'll be something that just gets stirred up in us. These are holy moments. These moments we have together, we don't get them back. We don't get another shot at this. This is it. And let's be honest, for many of you, this is going to be the only time that you're gathered with the people of God and your family. It's going to be right now. So are you going to stand there and are you going to just let this moment pass by and you're going to just kind of fiddle around and you're not going to put any fuel into the tank? I admonish you. I beg you in the name of Jesus this morning, tell him what you need. Reach over and take the hand of the person beside you and say, I need you to pray with me. I need my tank to get filled. I'm telling you, if you leave this morning without your tank being filled, it is a choice you're going to have to make, but listen, and you're going to make for yourself. But you're not going to leave this morning without this pastor standing up in front of you and saying, I beg you, don't leave like that. My God, my God, my God. Now, there's some folks right now, in the name of Jesus, as they play that, are you listening to what that song is saying? I am a child of God. Listen, this isn't the pastor getting on to you. This isn't the pastor scolding you. This is the gas attendant standing here with a pump in his hand saying, listen, it's a long way to the next stop. Why don't you pull in and why don't you get filled up because you're going to need it. Whoever that's for, and I promise you it's for more than one person in this room this morning, you respond right now and you come to this altar in the name of Jesus and let's get, let's get filled up. Let's get filled up. God says, I've been wanting to do that for 
from you for a long time. Here it is. Now listen, all of us get to be a part of that because we are only the church as we operate and function and do what the, the church is supposed to do. And this is what we're supposed to do. I want you, listen, I want you to stir up inside you. Holy Spirit, stir us up right now. Stir us out of passivity and complacency and let us realize that right now in this moment there's warfare and this is a battle and there's going to be some breakthrough and some victory and there's going to be some overcoming in this moment.
blessings in my life. There have been a lot of things that God brought my way. And even at the time, I didn't always understand what a blessing it was. One of the great blessings of my life was as a teenager, from the time I was 16 till I was probably 20, I worked at a grocery store. Man, I loved that job. And one of the things I loved about that job was the fact that I got to see thousands of folks. I'd put their groceries in their trunk and I'd build relationship and connection with them. There was a, a lady and I, every time they came into the store, she always had her kids with her. And the kids, every time they were with us there at the store, I would hug on them, love on them, I talked to them. And there was a, a rapport that really got developed. Over time, I remember, I remember being at the store one night working, and I remember this mama showing up. And again, I would preached at churches where they attended. So, I mean, it was a relationship that had been cultivated in the grocery store and other places. And I remember her showing up one, one afternoon, one evening when I was at work, and she came up to me, and you could just see it was one of those moments. She just had that look in her eye. You ever, you ever seen somebody like that? 
They're doing what they're doing, yeah, because they want to, but they're doing what they're doing because they feel compelled by God. And she looked at me, and she was about in tears, and she had a little white envelope that had my name on the front of it. And she said, I dug around the house. She said, I picked up nickels and quarters and dimes so I could get enough gas in the tank to get down here to give you this. Because she said, God told me to tell you and to give you this. I'm telling you, when you take something like that in your hand, you better watch it, man. I remember opening that thing up. I remember hugging her. And I remember opening that thing up later. And I remember pulling that handwritten note out. And the, note, the essence of the note was telling me what a blessing she would been to her family. And that God's hand was upon me. And it was this, this entire letter. And there was a $5 bill stuck inside. $5. She went through the entire house. She put just enough gas in the car to get there. I don't even know if she had enough to get back. But she was determined that $5, that $5 bill was going to go in my hand. And listen, I'm telling you to this day, somewhere in my, my keepsake box, that $5 bill is stuck up. Because you understand, the next couple of months, about once a month, she'd show up or it'd come through the mail. And it'd be her little handwriting and it'd be another encouraging note. Except in the future, it was a dollar. And I'd open that thing and I'd read that letter and I'd say, see that dollar and I'd say to myself, God, anything and everything you do with me is going to be based on that kind of, that kind of gift, that kind of thing. God, how in the world? I'm saying to you this morning, I'm saying to you this morning, I'm saying to you this morning, God is doing extraordinary things if we're looking for what he's doing. And I'm telling you, every time through the years that I've opened that letter, that I've looked at that money, for a long time, I carried it in my wallet, stuck away where I couldn't spend it. Never spent one of them, she said to me. Got them stuck back somewhere because I never want to forget that he that has begun the good work in us is able to bring it to completion in the end. Amen. And what he's doing, he's doing divinely and he's doing the work. And listen, part of what we've done this morning, part of the prayer, part of this moment that we've spent in prayer this morning is him just reminding you that he hadn't forgot about where you're at. Part of it is you've been asking for some stuff quietly and you've been saying it over and over. And I believe for some of you, you haven't even told your spouse about what you've been asking. But I'm telling you, God saying to you this morning, I've been hearing that. I've been hearing that. I've been banking that. I've been holding on to that. The scripture de describes it kind of like as a, an essence, a, a smoke almost that comes up into the nostrils of God. And I'm telling you, I believe he's saying this morning, I've been smelling it. I've, I've been ruminating in it. I've been kind of thinking about it. I've been planning. I've been designing. I've been working. I'm telling you, he's got the answer that you and I need. Amen. Say, preacher, you need to calm down. You need to chill. No, I'm telling you, boys and girls, men and women of God, we need to get stirred up. Because I'm telling you, part of what God wants to do here and what he wants to do in your life cannot be done as long as we're passive. It can't be done as long as we're willing to sit back, sit down, and just sit there. I'm telling you, part of this is going to take us getting up. It's going to take us pursuing. It's going to take us advancing. It's going to take us saying, God, if you'll load the gas tank and you'll send a lady with a $5 bill, you must not want me to forget. Amen. I'm telling you, he don't want you to forget what he's doing. He don't want you to forget what he's done in the past. He don't want you to forget what he's up to. Because I'm telling you, the God that has done in the past and is working and moving now is the same God that's got the future under control. Amen. So lay it in his hands. Trust him. Now listen, I'm telling you, there's enough excitement rolling up in me this morning for all of us. I, dear God, we forget. You forget, don't you? Forget. Forget. I forgot about that five dollar bill stuck back in my good my, my, my keepsake box. You know, I forgot about it, but you know what happened a few minutes ago? It came back in my mind. And I thought about her kids, and I thought about that mama, and I thought about that family, and I thought about all the stuff they went through, and I thought about the level of sacrifice it took to load her kids up in a car that might not make it to the grocery store and back home, because she was going to be obedient to give me that five dollars and a note of encouragement and a hug and love. I want to be that, don't you? I want to do that. I want to be that. I think about all the times that I cry and complain and, and, and all just, oh, God, look at all the stuff I'm doing. Look at all the stuff I'm doing, all the sermons I'm preaching. Ain't nobody listening to my sermons. Ain't nobody hearing what I'm saying. Oh, 
You haven't just been to church. You've been to the Holy Spirit brooding over a group of people. Now listen, that's supposed to bring some difference. That's supposed to bring some change. That's supposed to be chaos. It is supposed to create some order because that's the, the very nature of what God does. The Spirit brooded over and reported to the Father, this doesn't look like us because there's no order. It's chaos. And He begins to speak and He says this. And it was. And He speaks and it, it is. And He speaks. And I'm telling you this morning, He said some things to you. He said some things over you and those are the things you didn't discern with your ear but you sensed them in your spirit and I'm telling you those are the things that cause shackles and chains to fall and those are the things that bring about change and transformation in your life Amen. What we're doing right now. So what the world we we're just letting him hover. Because I'm telling you, we are we the world just kind of hovers over you. The news kind of hovers over you. Spirit of the age just kind of hovers over you. The negativity and the chaos just kind of hovers over you. And I'm telling you, confusion, it just kind of hovers like smog cloud. The situation that you're in, it just seems so big, it just seems hopeless, it just seems like it's gonna stifle the life out of you. But it's like moments like this. It's moments like this. It's moments like this where we just let it hover over us and we just breathe in some fresh air. So I want us just to breathe in some fresh air.
trying to scare anybody this morning. I promise I'm not. I, I, I'm not a manipulator, you know. I, I'm not going to try to manipulate you. I'm not trying. I'm just saying to you that there's a reason the Holy Spirit is hovering like this. And I'm saying for all of us, we don't know personally what that is for. We don't know what's coming. We don't know who's going to be in the hospital. We don't know who's coughing. We're going to stand over next. But I'm telling you, when he hovers, when he broods, when he does like this right here, and he just keeps breathing, and he just keeps moving, and just keeps working, and he just says, are you going to just stand under what I'm doing? Are you going to just let me do that?
We rejoice because we know that God is moving and working and he's just bringing and doing. And we know, really it's a twofold thing. You're saying you're here to serve and be a part of what God's doing. And on the flip side, we're here saying that we're going to pray. We're going to stand alongside you. We're going to watch and, and, and do everything we can to see God's fullest work done in you and through you. And we want to be a part of that. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those today that you've sent our way. I thank you, Lord, that by standing here this morning, as a family, they're saying that this is where God has put us. We, we couldn't have imagined it. We couldn't have thought it. But he put us right here, and we're so glad he did. And, Lord, we in turn, we thank you that you put them right here with us. And God, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would reveal your plan and your direction and guidance for them. God, and direct their steps each and every step of the way. God, I pray those gifts and those things and those talents that you've put inside them. Lord, I pray that you would just, in this place, God, and in this season, God, I pray that those gifts and talents would just be poured out and used and that you'll just anoint and use them powerfully. We open our arms to receive them. We lift our hands to give you praise and honor and glory. And Lord, we open our mouths to declare not only that you're faithful and greater you, but Lord, also to thank you and praise you for sending them and for what you're going to do in them and through them in the future. So right now, Lord, bless their family. Bless their family, Father. God, and direct them. Father, those things that God, you've done in the past, those things that you're doing now and those things that you're going to do, let those things be accomplished, Lord, because in this moment we said yes. Yes. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. If there is nothing else, I'm going to ask you guys, do you guys mind standing here? I don't always have you standing, but do you mind standing up here and that'll give them a target this way? That's fine. All right. And if you guys will just make your way up here, hug these guys, love on these guys, let them know how thankful we are that they're part of this fellowship that God sent them our way.